So as you saw by the title, this is going to be episode one of our solar install process. It is going to be several long, so just FYI, there's going to be that. There's going to be a lot of stuff we go over. If there's anything we didn't go over, definitely put it in the comment section below, and we will try to hit on that either in a future episode, or I'll just try to answer you straight there. So thanks to everyone using our referral code, we were fortunate enough to get qualified for a few power walls. So the Tesla Energy team had reached out and asked about installing those. And along those lines, we actually turned around and asked them about solar. Because as we went over in the previous video where I kind of introduced all this and said we were getting solar, we had previously looked at solar and we're still very interested in it. And now it made sense more than ever with three electric cars, no ice cars in the garage, and just everything we had going on, it just really made sense that now is a good time to really move forward with solar. So in early January, we were put in touch with an energy advisor and they were going to basically build out our system, basically get us exactly what we wanted, tell us about the power walls, tell us about all the different products they offer. So we actually did a phone conference with her and it was excellent. She went over everything and just kind of went through the process with us, told us what to expect. The initial suggestion though for our solar system was a lot smaller than we were hoping for. Uh, it was an easier fix though than I would have thought because it actually turned out that the Google image was a little bit older and didn't have the new garage, which I'm actually sitting in now because it's really crappy outside and I can't film out there right now. And it didn't have this big garage, which is a ton of valuable roof real estate that we plan on using for this. So that's why it was a lot smaller than we expected. But that old Google image they had actually listed a tree in the middle of our driveway, which used to be there, but actually blew over a few years back in a very heavy windstorm. So that tree was no longer there. So that really helped open up a lot of the roof that wasn't accounted for also because they saw the tree there. So there are just a few things that were different from the image they had, which obviously things change in time and they don't do Google images every day. So things are gonna change, but it was really nice just to be able to tell her, hey, this is what changed, this is what we're looking at. After we mentioned those things to her, she was able to immediately modify the design and actually bumped it up to a 14 kilowatt system, which is a lot closer to what we were looking for. And she also provided us with pricing along with going over how many power walls we wanted installed and at the very end went ahead and we scheduled a site survey. So in February, a Tesla employee came out for the site survey. So the first thing he did when he arrived is ask if he could look at our router and see our Wi-Fi situation. Because what they do like to do is they prefer to actually hook up the Tesla gateway, which actually communicates with the solar and everything to be connected via ethernet cable. So after checking out the router, he proceeded to go ahead and we talked about our attic situation. We actually don't have an attic here. We have really high ceilings. So he did lots of measurements on the interior, basically right below where the solar panels would be, did the interior slopes of the ceiling, stuff like that. He took pictures, etc. They do take a lot of pictures through this process. So don't be alarmed if there's a lot of pictures taken. It's what they do. That's what they send back to the design team and everything. And then in the garage, he actually since it is not finished up above, was able to get the slope and get the width between the joists and everything. And he also got the thickness of the studs, which that's how they can determine what bolts they need to attach into the roof. So there's actually a lot of little things he was looking at that I had no idea they would. So then we moved on to power wall placement. And that was a pretty interesting thing that we learned is they prefer not to have them on an interior wall. So basically we have this exterior wall that has the Tesla done up thing that I did along with the supercharger back there. But we wanted kind of on the other side, but that is a wall that butts up to the house. And they didn't want that. I don't know why he didn't mention it and I forgot to ask, but it could be because there's fans on there. It could be for like fire codes maybe. I'm not really sure, but they prefer them to be in an outside wall. So we actually moved the placement to not right in front of my car, but on this other wall right here in the garage. That is perfect room. We are actually going with three power walls. So they will be right next to each other. You can do different power wall orientations. You can do three stack. If they're on the floor, you can do three stacked out like away from the wall. Uh, but we would really like to display these. So we are going to have them done up like that. It's an outside wall. So there's no issue in any of that. So after that, we moved on to the sub panel in the garage so he could check out our electrical situation. 
Uh, being that we have three cars to charge and everything, we have a sub panel here, and that's where it kind of got a little interesting. He had to put an arc flash suit on, helmet, gloves, uh, he had a really thick rubber mat he was standing on, and all that just to make sure that they are as safe as possible. Looked at the breakers, took pictures of the breakers, anything that they could use for the future he took pictures of. Then we moved outside to our main breaker panel, and again he had to wear all the uh, PPE. So after looking at everything, in and around the house, it was finally time to get on the roof. And so he just basically had a large ladder that he had with him on his truck and just put it up, got right on the roof, and they do install an anchor on the roof to prevent them from falling, obviously. Uh, one thing, since we didn't have an attic, is he actually had to remove one of the nails up on the roof to be able to get a wood sample and check out the thickness of the studs. So normally if they're in an attic, he can go up there, look at them, take pictures, but being that we don't have an attic here, uh, that's the only way they can really do so. And finally, the last thing on the roof is he had a 360 camera and went to all the surfaces actually on the roof because we have, we have quite a few different surfaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like eight or so different surfaces. And he went to all those and took 360 degree photos so that the engineers back at the design center can look and see if there's any obstructions or anything they need to worry about. All that was pretty much our first site survey. Uh, it went actually really quick. He was more than happy to answer any of our questions and we had a barrage of them. Obviously this is something new. I didn't want to shove the camera in his face so I didn't record a lot of it but it was really cool to talk to him and uh, got me that much more excited to get solar started. So late February, we actually did receive the first draft of what the system design would be. And then we kind of went back and forth with them a little bit up through March, just because we had some things happen. We took a good hard look at one of the trees in the front that was actually shading part of the roof for solar panels. And it was much like the one that had fallen a few years previously. It was dying. And rather than wait for it to fall on its own and potentially damage the house, we chose to remove it. And in turn actually opened up parts of the roof that we could add solar to so that was kind of nice but we did lose a tree so we need to go find I guess something that won't get too tall and plant there it did open up part of the roof so we were able to expand the solar even more so I guess in that turn it is great uh, rest in peace tree we miss you so the first design had 46 panels which totaled 14.95 kilowatt system so a, a pretty nice size system it's not small by any means and um, so when we first got the design, we noticed that there was room for a few more panels in certain spots. So we asked questions and that's when we found out that the message didn't get transferred over, that the tree was removed, stuff like that. So they added four more panels and then we asked if we could add an extra one because the way it was, there was a set amount on one side and one less on the other. So we kind of just wanted to make it the same on both sides. And so we actually were able to bump it up to 51 panels. So quite a large system at this point. So the final request ended up being for 51 of the 325 watt panels. They offer a few different ones. Uh, I believe 305, 315, and 325 watt. We'll get into that in a future video. So the 51 panels actually brought the system up to a 16.575 kilowatt system. So we've been just slowly adding it up there, trying to get as much that we can. And um, that would include three inverters, the gateway, the main breaker panel upgrade, we're probably going to redo the one in the garage because we're going to have three of the high power wall connectors put in. That way we can load balance everything and not have to worry about who's plugged in at what times. It'll be so much easier. So there's actually a lot going in on that. But Colorado doesn't allow you to build an infinite number of solar panels. So we kind of had to go through that process next and show what our usage was, what cars we had per just purchased that probably weren't on, but just a few of our bills. And we were able to get all that added up and then you can go 120% over that. So that basically puts us at our limit of like 16.5 kilowatt system. So we are maxed out so our solar will be installed first the power wells are being delayed um, and will probably not be installed till summer so i guess that brings us to where we are at today and to date we have not signed the contract yet 
We are waiting to decide on one last thing, and that is, should we stick with the 325 watt panels which we arranged for, or should we drop it down to the 315 watt panels? It might not seem like that big of a deal, but aesthetics are something that I am concerned with, but I'm also very concerned with efficiency. And the 325 watt panels actually have like the silver grid lines going through it, whereas the 315s are almost all black. So it's based on what you can kind of see from the street, which isn't going to be that much, uh, but we still need to decide on that. So if we go with the 315 watt panels, obviously we won't get the full 16.575 kilowatt system. It will be lower. I don't know exactly. We'll call them, cover that in a future video, but it'll probably be closer to about 16 kilowatts. So we will lose a little bit there, but we will have the black panel. So we're trying to decide on that right now. I don't know. Here's like the two pictures. What do you guys think looks better? Or are you guys more concerned with efficiency or more aesthetics? I don't know. Let me know down in the comment section below because I really love efficiency, but I really want it to look good. So I don't know. I, I'm kind of torn, but I think right now I'm leaning more towards the 325 watt panels because I just want to maximize it. That is basically it for this. I wanted to just kind of give you a little rundown on what we have done thus far with our solar experience. I know a lot of you have been asking. A lot of you might be going through this and knowing what kind of what the process is. So that's where we're at. Hopefully we'll sign within the next few days and then get the ball rolling. They've already contacted Excel to get our system approved. So we are moving right along and I can't wait to see this go in. I would like to thank today's sponsor for this video and our solar endeavor, and that is Wonder Capital. They actually help small and mid-sized businesses across the US go solar, and you can actually help with that. So they do have different funds that you can actually invest in. So I'll go ahead and put the link for their website down below. Definitely check them out, show them some love. Let us know down below if you are going solar too and experiencing this, that so we can experience it all together. And as always, a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Go ahead and click here to subscribe, here for some other videos, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.